Yesterday, the preacher said to me, I don't like your kind of preaching. <laughs> well, that was only after I told him that he couldn't preach. But I said that to say this. Two-thirds of my preaching is uh, to step on toes. I preach for God. I don't preach for people. And God told me to reprove. That's one third. To rebuke. That's two thirds. Pure stepping on of toes. Reprove, rebuke. Then good part is to exhort. Tell you to keep on keeping on. On this ninth day, January 20, 22. Whew. I want you to look over into Jeremiah chapter number 32. I'm going to read a uh, little bit of read half of that 38th verse in Jeremiah chapter 32. The B portion of verse number 38 says, and I will be their God. And I will be their God. If you need a subject for this message today, I'll submit to you a little bit of the Charles Haddon Spurgeon subject on this text. And just call it unspeakable joy. That's what I'm feeling now. Show sure enough now. Uh, I want to introduce this message by saying that 535 B.C. was the time frame of Jeremiah's book. Here today, I'm using the Ed Shields preaching formula, which is drawn from the book of Jeremiah. But in that book of Jeremiah, three themes, three themes are covered. Number one, we're talking about the whole book of Jeremiah. Now, this is the outline. Number one, backsliding. Fall of man. Whole Adam and Eve were backsliders. And I just believe that we got a little backsliding in our DNA. And they were driven by God out of the garden. First, uh, division in Jeremiah's book of backsliding. Second division, second topic is bondage. I'll get on to this a little bit later, but I just want to tell you that backsliding brings about bondage. Fall of man. Brings about bondage and places man in need of redemption and Ed Shield says that redemption comes through Jesus Christ. Third and final division in Jeremiah's book, restoration, backsliding, bondage, restoration. It Shields would say ruined by fall, redeemed by Christ, regenerated by the Holy Ghost. That's joy. Whew. 
Margaret Duro, I'm counting it all joy today. <laughs> I count everything as joy in Christ Jesus. The days, my friends, were dark days for the Jews when Jeremiah wrote the words of our text. Dark days in the kingdom of Judah. I ask you, are you facing dark days today? I got several rhetoric questions that I will be asking in this message. Well, my friend, if you, if today, if, if you're looking at dark days ahead on this ninth day, January, I got good news. Good news for you. Today, Whew. Uh, in chapter, chapters, I'm going to give you three chapters, Jeremiah, because we back here before Christ came, and he prophesied the coming of Christ, but I'm not going to deal with that today. I just want you to know that in chapters 30 through 33, which is, gives us our take, Jeremiah his focus was upon God's promises of restoration to the Jews. And I think God did a pretty good job restoring those Jews. I want you to know that he can restore you as he has restored me time, time again. Look at what it says in Jeremiah 32 and 37. God is talking here. And he says, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whether I have driven them. God will drive you sometime. <laughs> when you're backsliding, he'll drive you. <laughs> he says, I'll gather them out of all the countries whether I have driven them in mine anger. Is God angry with you today? And he goes on to say, in my anger, in my fury, and in my great wrath. God has feelings, just like you and I have feelings. He got mad. He drove them out. Well, why did he do that? They backslid. Well, how did they backslide? You know what they did? They worship idol gods burning candles on the top of their homes and worship the false god. And God didn't like it. His anger, his fury, his wrath was against them. But he said, I will bring them again. And uh, this is Jeremiah 32 and 37, the promise is, I will bring them again to this place. And I will call them to dwell safely. The enemies had destroyed the city and burned it down. They were fretful and fearful and didn't feel safe and secure. And so I ask you, are you fretting and fearful about your safety today? Your safety today? Well, my friend, today's text is God's promise to you and to me today. It extends from Jeremiah's day to us. And this promise in our text, our text is a promise. This promise, I will be their God, is all that you need. I want you to know that I know that you need something that will satisfy you. 
You need something that will last. This single verse from Jeremiah is enough. I will be their God. It's enough. Hmm. Feel it all down in my bones. If you put this promise, I'm snatching this out of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's hands. I'm not going to plagiarize this thing. Oh, uh, I think there's a 25 word uh, restriction governing plagiarism. But Charles Haddon Spurgeon says, if you'll put this promise, I will be their God into your coffee cup every morning. You will be able to say with the 23rd Psalmist, <laughs> like he said, my cup runneth over. Ah, oh, that whew, is my testimony today. My cup, I want to hit it so bad, but I want to be cool. My cup is running over. So let this promise uh, become real to you. I will be there, God. Let that promise settle into your soul and become real in your life. Say it. Say the Lord is my God. A friend, when you stand on this promise, you will possess everything. The howling winds of doubt and fear will assail you, whew, just like they're sailing me. <laughs> but you know what they're doing? They're sailing right, <laughs> right on over my head. My God, who is all in all, is able, my friend, able to fill all of your desires your hopes, all of your wishes. Whew. I want you to know that I know that your desires may be plenteous, but God, my God's immeasurable wealth can more than satisfy you in every detail. Fill your desires, hopes, aspirations with more than enough. Fill them to overflowing. Now, I ask, is there anything that you uh, want other than God? Are you complete when you are a child of God? When everything else has failed you. Whew. Our God, my all-sufficient God, is enough to satisfy you. Whew. I say that because I know that he has satisfied me. I will close this message and get on out of here. 14 minutes gone. My, uh, my, my, my gigs are running short. And I need to hurry up and get through. We'll close out this message. Huh. With what Jeremiah said in that 20 seventh verse, text 38. I want to close out with what Jeremiah said in the 27th verse of the 32nd chapter of his book. He says, behold, this is God talking, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Are you facing something hard today, my friend? 
I ask you, is God your God? Are you acquainted with God? Are you his child? Have you ever had a personal encounter with Jesus? If you are unsure of this fact, here is what you need to do. Go to God in prayer and telling him, I'm sorry, Lord, for all of my sins. And I realize that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and tell him, I now accept your gift of eternal life. Tell him, thank you for your love and forgiveness. Thank you for the new life I have in Jesus Christ. And from this day forward, I will follow you in Jesus' name. You got joy when you pray that prayer. The wheels of God start to roll in. And they roll on over in your soul. The Holy Spirit penetrates your being. And you become born again. Ain't that joy? Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, unto him who's able to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Now unto him, the only wise God, our Savior, Jesus, to whom be glory both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Count it all joy, my friend. Goodbye.